Hi, and welcome to First Lutheran Church, Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, and the third in our midweek Lenten series devotionals called Believe. Uh, we're focusing on Sunday morning, looking at major and minor characters of Jesus' time on earth, um, and then looking at them at a little different angle, at a little more in depth on our Wednesday night devotional series. And so in week one, two weeks ago, we looked at the character of Thomas, disciple of Jesus, who was not in the room when Jesus appeared to the disciples after he came back to life. And Thomas wanted to experience for himself Jesus alive before he would believe. And so Jesus comes to him and lets him put his fingers into the wounds of his hand and into his side. And Thomas comes to believe. And Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. In week two, last Wednesday night, uh, and during our second whole week, we focused on the soldier at the cross, at the foot of the cross, the one responsible for overseeing Jesus' crucifixion, and how after seeing what he saw on that day, hearing what he heard at the foot of the cross, after Jesus dies, says, truly, surely, he was the Son of God. I'm not sure what faith that worked in his hearts, but we know that he was led to proclaim, surely this was the Son of God. We were challenged to, uh, to think, wh what have we experienced with Jesus, and what does it allow us to proclaim with our lives? Uh, tonight, tonight we're going to venture a little bit further, and we're going to um, look at the character of Pontius Pilate. Pastor Keith on Sunday morning uh, took a specific in-depth look at his role in the crucifixion of Jesus. And tonight we're going to ask some pretty basic questions for me and for you as we ponder. As we do that, we're glad you're here joining with us on this midweek Lenten journey. And we make our beginning tonight in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to Join us in song, and then we're going to look at a Bible passage tonight from the Gospel of Matthew, and then we're going to have some thoughts together. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. in 
thanks again for joining us. Our, uh, our devotional tonight, our devotional time, we're going to spend looking at a section from Jesus' trip to the cross, from uh, before he was crucified and his time before the court. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 11. If you want to grab your Bibles and read along, or if you want to go online and find a Bible, Bible Gateway, or you can find another online Bible. I'm reading from the NIV version. If you need a Bible, by the way, we can help you find one that is the right size print for you, that is, has the right study notes if you'd like that, and uh, just to have you have your own Bible and to be able to uh, follow along, or you can go online. This is from Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 11. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you. But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, don't have anything to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called Christ, Pilate asked. And they all answered, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Washed his hands of the matter. Pontius Pilate, innocent. Wanted nothing to do with it. Because deep down, he knew Jesus was innocent. And so he said, I'm washing my hands of this. It's on you. I am innocent. What a horrible role to have to play in history. The one to sentence Jesus Christ to death, the Son of God. Uh, he even got his name in the Apostles' Creed. As far back as the 4th century A.D., crucified, we say, by Pontius Pilate. Uh, Pastor Keith went into great detail on Sunday morning. You can go back and watch that, that message from Sunday morning of Pontius Pilate's dilemma as governor of the political turmoil of the time and how he needed to keep the peace. The political tension of his day, but also the tension of this situation in particular. John goes into some more detail that we don't get in Matthew's account. If you want to look there, you can see in the interaction that goes on between Jesus and Pontius Pilate in John chapter 18 and chapter 19. Bottom line is, he finds no guilt in Jesus. But due to the pressure of the crowd, well, he tries to just find a way out of this. He tries to release Jesus so that it's done with. But instead, well, the pressure is too great. The pressure is too great, and they want Barabbas, a notorious criminal, released to them instead, because it was the custom of the time to release one prisoner. And finally, Pilate releases Barabbas and turns Jesus over, but he says, I'm innocent of this man's blood. He proclaims his own justification or his own innocence, whether he's trying to convince himself or the others 
I can't be sure. But was he? Was he innocent of Jesus' death and crucifixion? Was Pilate innocent? Are you? Am I? Innocent of the death of Jesus? Scripture is pretty clear that we are not innocent at all. Pilate was not innocent. The people there that day were not innocent. The elders and chief priests were not innocent. The Romans in the crowd were not innocent. The Jews were not innocent. All have sinned, we read in Romans, and fall short of the glory of God. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, we read, He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. See, human nature, when we're accused of something, whether Pontius Pilate or us, there's kind of three more natural responses to our nature. One is to deny it. Two would be to deflect it or to accuse someone else. Or three, to justify our actions. And just like Pilate, well, wasn't able to wash his hands of this situation, neither are we. See, your sins and mine put him on the cross. And his love for you and for me held him there. Nothing can wash away our sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, Pilate, Pilate at the end of it symbolically, <laughs> for the crowd, you know, he's got, you know, maybe he didn't have dirty hands, maybe he did, but he takes soap and water and he tries to scrub them clean. I don't know, have you ever taken the chain off of a bike or worked on a motor that's very greasy and oily or got sap on your hands that then get, becomes dirty and soap and water just won't cut it? You, know, you and I would love our hands to be innocent, as did Pilate, but even if they look clean, they're not. And we're told that nothing but the blood of Jesus can really wash us clean. As we ponder on this Lenten journey, I have some questions for us to look at together tonight. And I don't want to rush these as we do. When you or I are accused of something, are we more likely to, one, deny it, two, accuse, or deflect to some other person, or three, to justify. So I want you to think of your default position. If you get caught doing something, or someone accuses you of something, and deep down you know you're guilty, do you deny it? Is that your first reaction? Are you more likely to accuse someone else and deflect it in another direction? Uh, just like Adam and Eve in the garden, when, when God comes and says, hey, Adam, what, what, what happened here? What went on? Is it that, that woman you put here, yeah, that's who made me do it. And then the woman's like, no, no, the serpent. The serpent made me do it. Guilty. So deny, accuse, or deflect, or three, just try to justify our actions. Well, you, you know, it, it wasn't so bad after all. I'm not as bad as those other people out there, or I didn't do that. Like, look at that over there. Or, well, they really made me angry, so I was justified in my anger. So that's our first question for you to ponder tonight. When accused of something, and you know in your heart of hearts you're guilty, are you more likely to deny it, accuse or deflect, or three, justify? Take a minute and think about that. For me personally, it really depends on who's accusing me and what it's about. Whether I, I could be doing any one of those three. I could deny it, I could accuse or deflect, I could try to justify it. I have and continue to do all three. Owning it. 
owning it is the second thing we'll look at tonight. So the second question for you to consider tonight is, what sins have you committed this day in the days just past? In our thoughts, your thoughts, my thoughts, words, our actions, things that we were supposed to do or should have done, that we sh or that we did that we shouldn't have done or things that we should have done that we didn't do that you know about you actually know about if you think about it whether it's not putting god first in your day forgetting to even have a conversation with him not honoring his word breaking his commandments to put him first and love those around us maybe it was an angry outburst even if in your own head trying to justify what that meant. Maybe it was some evil thoughts in your heart or in your head. It's going to take some time and ponder that in light of God's commandments for us to love him above everything else and love our neighbors and care for them. And then confess your sins as I confess mine to God. You see, he tells us that he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he confess our sins. You see, you and I had him crucified, just like Pontius Pilate did, in a very real way. So take some time in the quiet of your own heart and mind right now and confess your sins that you are aware of. Ask God to help you. Come clean before God. Don't accuse anybody else. Don't deny that it's your guilt. Don't deflect. Don't justify. If you need more time than that, you can pause it, and go back, you can make a list, you can do what you need to do. Some of you might have been saying, boy, he's had a rough couple of days if he's taken that long to confess all his sins. That's just the few I have come to know for sure in my head and my heart as I reflect on my past few days. So first of all, you're going to, when accused of something, we already dealt with that question. Number two, confessing our sins. Number three, Here's the third thing tonight. To trust him to clean you. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, we're told. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Symbolically tonight, remembering your baptism in mind. Go wash your hands. Maybe wash your face. Take a little soap. It isn't soap and water that washes you and I clean from our sin. It's what Jesus did for us on the cross. It's what Jesus did in his perfect life, in his death, suffering, and in his glorious resurrection, which we'll celebrate on Easter. Claim your cleansing. Claim your washing in mine. By his blood, we have been set free. And that should help us to be excessively thankful and very humble and ready to accept our responsibility because it was not just Pontius Pilate that crucified Jesus. It was you and I. It was the sins of the whole world that he took on himself to that cross. It was his love for all of humankind that held him there until it was finished. Last week, the soldier centurion at the foot of the cross was led to believe truly, surely this was the Son of God. 
may we be led to say those same things. Truly, this was the Son of God. And be grateful, be grateful that he covered Pontius Pilate's sins and yours and mine and the sins of the whole world. It's pretty good news. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, as we come to you this night, oh, we'd like to deny our guilt. We'd like to deflect and point the finger at somebody else whose sins are much greater than ours or who caused us to sin. Or, or to justify our actions, our thoughts, our words, our deeds why we didn't do something we should have, why we did something we shouldn't have. But Lord, when we look in the mirror of your law, we know that it's us. We're, we failed in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. And we've brought some of those sins that we know of to you tonight. And we trust that you, through Jesus, your promises that you forgive, you set us free, you clean us up. Through the waters of baptism, you made us your children. Through faith in you and our confession, we're connected to that forgiveness that Jesus has won for us. So wash us clean again and again. Set us free to be your kids in this world that we may offer your mercy and your forgiveness to others. That we would be ready to accept our own responsibility. That we wouldn't just deny or deflect or justify that we'd own it and be grateful that you've covered it. Continue to walk with us on this Lenten journey, that we would learn all that we are to learn to take us deeper in relationship to you as we believe, as we come to believe, or as we believe even deeper. We thank you for your love and your patience with us through Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining. We hope that uh, we're, we are going to close with a song in a moment. We hope you'll join us Sunday morning, either in person if you can, 10 o'clock here in Kelowna at First Lutheran. You don't have to register or sign up. And it's uh, Communion Sunday, so be, communion will be offered be near the end of the service again. Um, and then we'll be back looking at the next character of this Believe series next Sunday and then on Wednesday. So we hope you journey with us. Um, God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me I know nothing.